It was difficult when you were off off the road, wasn't it? If you had any, um, like a... a Accident? Sort of, yeah, or damage to the cab. Yeah. That, that would be quite hard, wouldn't it? Well, then what their argument was that you could go and hire another taxi from um, a garage. But they were so... Oh, no, I can't say... Uh, poo carts that you, you didn't you rather have the time off yeah I mean you didn't get paid for holidays or anything like that bank holidays but we all survived somehow yeah yeah and would you pay like a like an annual fee to the radio circuit or is it like a monthly month? and that was the the same whether you did lots of work or yeah. hardly went out yeah that's right so that's quite a big overhead then or it was an overhead yeah but I, I used to enjoy the radio I think if I hadn't had the radio I might have jacked the job in a long long time ago it just made it more interested yeah and you get to know the customers the customers get to know you and it just yeah it was just pleasant I used to love doing those jobs yeah but there was also one of those stories with these kids who were supposed to be a bit loopy um was Picking up from one score, and the fella in the back is about 13, 14, and he gets out and he's chatting to me. He's leaned over and taken my watch. Just, my watch is gone. <laughs> he's got it. He just took it How, yeah, without just, you noticing? Hardly. It was so fast. I mean, it was an Argus one, which I always keep because of bashing it. I mean, he's giving it back. I thought, well, this is. If you can do that quick and you've got a ten thousand pound Rolex on there, yeah, it would have been. Quite, yeah, yeah. That's why I've never, never would have an expensive watch. Yeah, yeah. And this kid's supposed to be loopy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you used to have a money bag. Yes. Well, that's what ev- all, oh, all everyone had. Yeah. Uh, I used to. Have it t- tucked down by the seat in this par- partition. But I've had a couple of fi- Waterloo, a couple of drug addicts, so we've got a light, mate, and they're leaning in there and they're looking, <laughs> looking for it. <laughs> Makes you a bit more streetwise. Yeah. Yeah. Were you ever um, diddled? You know, did you have people who'd, who'd run at the end of the, the fair or? Yeah, I've had it. Well, this is mainly it's the hours work because working days and person are very very. Well, a couple of times someone wait for me and I just drive off, I wipe the face. A couple of times like that. But you you prefer doing early mornings and days because yeah. rather than nights. Yes. Because of that, yeah. And being on the radio, you guaranteed, you guaranteed your money. And now the radio's gone. Well. Dialogues. It's gone. Yes. No one's. No, I've not seen any mention of it. No coverage of it anywhere. The the the, the radio circuit mm. owned a building, but they got what in the eighties, early eighties, probably, just off City Road. No, we got that in about nineteen ninety eight. I think it was. Yeah. And the value of it went so high. No, that that this one was. Oh. I don't know who it is. <laughs> but we sold it, then bought, because we needed bigger premises, bought this one in City Road. And then, of course, that was before um, Old Street Roundabout, what they call it, Silicon Roundabouts, before, and then it was just luck being in the right place. Yeah. And, of course, everyone sort of moved in there. Yeah. It's a bit like the housing in central London, if you lucky to buy one years and years ago and it was just yeah. lucky that it's all gone up so the radio circuit cooperative all jointly owned this property that was just yeah. getting insane amounts of money being offered to it <laughs> yeah. that was better to disband and split the profit yeah and then fold dialer cab um, into just what, what wind it up yeah or they wind up and join these other two circuits Oh, well, thanks. Well, I hope thanks. it's... Yeah, no, um, it's just it's not. it was just the basics of how 
how you get a badge and how mm. you know what it was like back then did you ever forget to turn your orange light on you know see if you're driving around lots of times <laughs> thinking it's no work <laughs> And I wasn't the only one to do it. <laughs> Did you ever have anyone fight over who got you first? I've had it once in Bond Street and I picked a woman up. Another woman come running over to me and said, I saw you first. Oh, God, no, I don't really know. And, and you always said your rule is whoever gets in first is the yeah, one no, who that, gets in. That, that's, I mean... Like musical chairs. Uh, I should, as I say, I should have had this this book, writing book, and write all these oh, things right. down. No, this is brilliant. This is this is this this is absolutely that's brilliant. Thank you. Because now, when I get asked these really basic questions <laughs> about the history of being a cabbie, um, now I know. That's funny about the King's Cross place. I didn't realise that they that, split up. More or less, that's why I like that. It's not until I've actually stopped and noticed how much King's Cross has played in my life. Yeah. I mean, e even St Pancras underneath there. I used to have all my taxi work done by Brian. Oh, yeah, what, in the arches? Yeah, underneath the arches there. Before they knocked them down for the yeah. Eurostar. yeah. It's, it was in um, Prime Suspect, wasn't it? That yeah. the the it all ended in, in the arch. It was yeah. that was the arches where you used to get your cab fixed. Yeah, in Prime Suspect, they were the ones by the church. Oh so right, so it's further went down right the way down. But you used to have my electrical work done there. This actually went in underneath um, St Pancras, where one brewery used to put all their barrels in there. So they said, yeah. But that's where you used to get your cab fixed. Yeah, and there used to be a cafe there. A lot of the fellas used. I, I didn't use it because I only li lived up the road. Was it on the Midland Road side or the... No, is it Bedford uh, Road? I can't remember. You used to went in by... Well, you know you've got King's Cross there. And I mean, you just went across the road in, into... <laughs> Into the arches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the battery's gone. That's it. Yeah, of course I went to school in King's Cross when we first moved down to London. I actually used to give the fella a couple of, I don't know, a couple of shillings or something. Because if your battery blew up or didn't work, you're off of work for an hour. Uh, for a day while you got it changed well, so you used to top up your battery battery yeah and water and oil oh that's right the, the, the three things they used to check for you so you used to uh, you were just saying you, you fill up with diesel about once every two days yeah when you finish when I finish work yeah. and you'd always get that done in King's Cross yeah in York Way yeah quite a lot of fellas we all did that because we lived there and um when they're filling up, they'd, they'd check your oil and, and battery. Yeah, and didn't overspill the diesel, so it all went down the side of the cab. It's how you're doing that. <laughs> I never knew why it was called, well, I know now, but it was always called Derv in there. Yeah. Which is, is that because it's diesel engine something yeah. vehicle? No, it's just Derv. It's diesel. is just a sort of nickname for it. Yeah, and you get another the fellas were nice. It was just a lot quiet and simple times. People didn't have two hundred thousand pound mortgages and a cab and a brand new cab that he's paying fortunes for. Yeah. You can relax a bit. That's why some of the fellas used to get up so tight, they owed so much money. What, in the, later on, or? What oh, later the, on, yeah. Like in the 80s? No, no, later, I'll say more in the 90s. Can you please help my daddy get 1,000 subscribers? 
just click on his face. Thanks. Bye.